Greetings and welcome everyone. Uh, this is a phrase I never thought I would ever say in my entire teaching career, but welcome to physics. <laughs> oh, for those of you who know me, you'll know that that's going to be a, a good running joke throughout this entire series here. Uh, my name is Joe Lamb, J Lamb Bio. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Just kidding, you can't because I turned the comments off, I think. Oh crap, maybe I didn't do that. I'll need to check. Anyways, um, so today for our very first video, we're going to break into physics just a little bit by describing motion, speed, and velocity. Should be pretty straightforward. I'm um, assuming if you're taking physics, you're probably pretty good with math already to begin with. So, so a little bit about our student learning objectives for this video. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe and analyze the concept of motion and uh, be able to calculate and understand concepts of velocity and speed. So again, this is a physics course, so you can anticipate probably having quite a few math problems to be able to go through and solve, but uh, we're on a very similar journey together, my first time teaching it, your first time learning it, so hopefully we'll have a good time. Let's get started. So when we describe motion, you know, an object that's moving, uh, typically we need a frame of reference, and typically we use uh, a frame of reference that's known as a coordinate system. You can think of this like the Cartesian planes that you use when you're graphing things in math class, calculating slope and whatnot. And we'll be doing a heck of a lot of that in here. So some frames of reference here. The soccer ball rolled 25 meters in two seconds. We drove 35 miles per hour. We need some sort of quantifiable information. That is, we need numerical information to understand a little bit more about what that motion looked like, whether it was fast or slow. Uh, you know, we need numbers to be able to calculate that and think about that. So we're going to use numbers, obviously, and um, we're going to use a coordinate system that's very, very similar to what you've seen in math class. So I want to talk about two key vocabulary terms here, the first one being distance. And so let's say you walk from your house to your friend's house, and then you walk to good old UDF, the pride and joy of southeastern Indiana and southwestern Ohio. If it's 2.1 kilometers to your friend's house and 4.3 kilometers to UDF, what's the total distance traveled? Well, you went from your house to your friend's house, and that's 2.1 kilometers, and then you went another 4.3 kilometers to UDF. So the distance, being the total length that is traveled, would be 2.1 kilometers plus 4.3 kilometers, which yields a total of 6.4 kilometers. Please make sure you include your units. So distance is the total length traveled. Now that would include, uh, let's say you're making a round trip to the grocery store, and let's say that it's 10 kilometers to the grocery store. Well, if you make a round trip, you travel a total of 20 kilometers. 10 kilometers to get to the grocery store, and 10 kilometers to get back from the grocery store to your house. Displacement, however, is a little bit different. Displacement is the net change in position. Um, this could be the same as distance if the movement is in the same direction. So, for example, in the previous problem, the distance and the displacement are the same. It's going to be 6.4 kilometers because distance would be how far you traveled, and then the displacement is how far you are from where you started. So those would be the same values. But let's take a look at the example here. Let's say we're going from the dorm and we go to our physics class, and then we are hungry after physics, of course, because we used our brains so much, it just made us absolutely starving, and we decided to go to the cafeteria. Well, if I take a look, going from the dorm to physics class is five blocks. And then going from physics to the cafeteria is six blocks. So the total distance is 11 blocks, right? Five blocks going from the dorm to physics, and then 11 blocks going from physics to the cafeteria. The displacement, though, is the net change in position. So even though I went five blocks to physics and then six blocks to the cafeteria, my total displacement is negative one block because my final position is one block behind my initial position. So that's a little bit different there. Remember that distance and displacement are not the same thing. Distance is the total distance traveled. Displacement is the net change in position. So even though you traveled 11 blocks and is a distance, you only have a displacement of negative one because of the movement. Distance is always a positive value. Displacement can be positive or negative based on where you are located based on your original position. So let's take a look at the sample problem. What is the distance traveled and the displacement if you travel from house B to UDF and then back to house A? Well, let's stick house B, our starting point, and we'll say that that is zero. It's 4.3 kilometers to UDF and 2.1 back to house A. So the distance, remember, is always a positive value. So if with terms of distance, we're going to go, 
going to change my color here for distance, so we'll use red for distance. We go from house B to UDF, and then all the way back to house A. So in this instance, we walked 4.3 miles, or I'm sorry, 4.3 kilometers, to go from 0 to 4.3. We then walked another 4.3 kilometers to get back, and then another 2.1 kilometers to go from house B to house A. So we just add all three of those values together, and what we should get is a total of 10.7 kilometers, and that is our distance. Now remember that displacement is just the change from where you start to where you finish. So here, I started here, and I'm going to finish here. So the displacement is just the distance between these two points. And in that instance, because we are going backwards from our frame of reference, negative 2.1 kilometers is our displacement. Okay. Remember that when we're looking in terms of directions, we need to consider what is forward and what is backwards. Okay. Just like in a Cartesian plane, um, you know, this the, the direction to the right is going to be forwards and the direction to the left is going to be the reverse. Okay. Pretty straightforward there. Let's talk a little bit about speed. Speed is simply the average rate of motion of an object. And this is given by the following formula, where the average speed is equal to distance over time. Keep in mind distance, not displacement. It's really important that we're able to keep those two things separate from one another. The units for this is meters per second, or m over s, and speed is always a positive value because we don't care about which direction we're going. If we're going north, south, east, west, uh, speed is always a positive value because we're looking at distance versus time. A kingfisher is a bird that catches fish by plunging into the water from a height of several meters. If a kingfisher dives from a height of 7.0 meters with an average speed of 4.00 meters per second, how long does it take to, take to reach the water? Well, remember, the speed is equal to distance over time. I'm given the speed and I'm given the distance so I can calculate for time. So 4 equals 7.0 meters over time. We'll just leave it seconds. Okay, 4.00 meters per second. We're going to rearrange this equation. So we're going to multiply by S. to get it out of the denominator. We're then going to divide both sides by four. We're gonna divide those two values to get 1.75 seconds. Okay. Simple enough, again, speed, distance over time, uh, always a positive value, and real simple to do some basic calculations with that. Let's move on. Now, velocity is different. Velocity is defined as displacement over time, not distance over time. And that is given by the following formula, where the average velocity is equal to displacement over elapsed time. So the only difference here is that we're looking at displacement in our numerator versus distance. Velocity tells us how fast an object is moving and can be both positive or negative. So this is when we start including um, the vector that's associated with it. Whereas when we looked at speed, it was positive in all directions. In this case, depending on which direction the car is going and your frame of reference, uh, velocity can be both positive and negative. An athlete sprints 50 meters in 6 seconds, stops, and then walks slowly back to the starting line in 40 seconds. If the direction of the sprint is taken to be positive, what are A, the average sprint velocity, B, the average walking velocity, and C, the average velocity of the complete round trip? Okay, so we have three different problems we're going to calculate velocity for. But we can kind of imagine this, and I always find it helpful to draw a picture. We've got a little guy here, okay, and he sprints 50 meters, stops, this takes six seconds. We go this way, stops. This takes 40 seconds. So we want to know the average sprint velocity. And keep in mind that this is 50 meters away. Okay. So remember that we're looking for velocity, and that is displacement over time. So for the sprint velocity, all we're going to look for is the difference between this distance here and this here. So that is where our starting and ending point is. So our displacement for part A is 
50 meters and it took six seconds. So we just simply plug those numbers in and solve. 50 divided by six is equal to 8.33 meters per second. Let's look at the next part of the problem. The next instance, I want to know the average walking velocity. Well, he walked back, yes? So walking backwards, the displacement, because we're going backwards, is negative 50 meters, because he's going from here to here. That took a total of 40 seconds. So we're going to divide 50 by 40 seconds to get an average velocity of negative 1.25 meters per second. The very last bit is asking for the average velocity of the complete round trip. Well, we started at this point and we ended at the exact same point. So the total displacement for part C is zero. Zero meters over 46 seconds, which means that the total velocity for the complete round trip is zero meters per second. Okay. So it's important to distinguish between these concepts, and it's weird to think velocity can be zero even though he actually moved. But remember that displacement specifically is the final position minus the initial position. It's the change in position, not the total difference traveled. The position is the same for the total round trip, and so therefore his total displacement is zero. And zero divided by anything is, well, zero. So just to recap speed versus velocity. Speed is rate of motion. It is always positive and gives absolutely no information about the direction whatsoever. The greater the speed, the faster an object moves. Velocity, however, is rate of motion and direction. The sign of velocity gives the direction of motion. Remember, we can have positive velocity and negative velocity based on where we start and our frame of reference. Magnitude of velocity is the speed of motion. Okay, so just kind of keep those things in mind that um, distance versus displacement and speed versus velocity, and that will cover pretty much what you need to know for the first week. So hopefully by the end of this video, you can describe and analyze the concept of motion by thinking of displacement versus distance, and also calculate and understand the concepts of velocity and speed. Hey, hope you guys have a great day. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we will talk to you guys later. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.